according to today's newspaper headlines, it seems that it's the end of the road for motoring presenter Jeremy Clarkson as the announcement came out. And said that it's with deep regret the decision had been taken not to renew him. <laughs> sunshine through today with seasonal temperatures we should reach our normal high of about 82 degrees by this afternoon. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone of the dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright Sunshiny day Think I can make it now The pain is gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared Here is the rainbow I've been praying for It's gonna be a bright Sunshiny day And he was fired by car magazine, fired by auto car magazine, fired by Scotland on Sunday, and somehow he managed to get fired by a Volvo dealership. 
probably for driving too slowly, ladies and gentlemen, James Bay! Thank you, thank you, you're very kind. And, ladies and gentlemen, you probably can't see him from the back. But, I assure you, he is here. He was fired by Radio York, fired by Radio Leeds, and fired by Radio Lancashire. It's Richard Hammond! Hello, hello, thank you, thank you. And, ladies and gentlemen, over here, he's, he's basically a shaved ape in a shirt. And he, technically, is the only one of us never to be fired by anyone. It's Jeremy Clarkson! Thank you so much. And the good thing is, it's very unlikely I'm going to be fired now because we're on the internet. <laughs> Which means I could pleasure a horse. No, no, no. Dog? No, no pleasuring of any sort. There are families watching. Yes. Anyway, we are all car journalists. And we have spent the last 20 years... Being fired? Yes. But we have poured everything we know, everything we care about, into this show. Everything. And coming up now is a small montage of what you can expect over the next 12 weeks. Are we ready, gentlemen? I d honestly, I don't know. Is that the size of the drop or what's happened to his penis? You're looking at magnificence. Help! Risk is bad. James says we've got to stop the fuel. He doesn't like us. Bloody Laura. Maybe leaking slightly. What a moron. You sack my limousine! I've lost one of my nose tampons! This is not a particularly cultural thing to do. I don't like the smell of tyre smoke in the evening. Oi! Get back in! James is falling! There's no dignity in that, is there? No. Thank you so much. Now, thank you. All of that is going to be hosted from this. This is our new travelling studio tent. Thank you so much. And we're going to be roaming the world in it. We're going to be like gypsies. Only the cars we drive are going to be insured. Stop saying things that are going to get us fired. Yes, but I'm just saying it's brilliant. It is. Oh. Oi, who shot our drone? <laughs> Did someone shoot it? Him. Woo. Well, look, let's not get bogged down in who shot what, OK? Let's get changed, get on with the show. Yeah, let's do it. Can we get on with the show? Yeah. Let's do it.
grand tour. Thank you. Now, we hope you like our tent. We think the great thing is that because it roams around the world, we get a different view out of the big picture windows every week. So this week, obviously, we've got the high desert of California. Next week, who knows? I do. Well, I guess, James, we know it's Johannesburg. Well, now, now they know. But I know they know now. It doesn't matter. Point is, the view changes, and so does the audience, OK? I mean, this week, you're all Americans. <laughs> Now, this is a bit of a problem for people like us who speak English. <laughs> we can converse perfectly well in a shop or a restaurant, but when it comes to cars and motoring, every single word you use is different. When I say different, I mean wrong. <laughs> when you change gear with a lever, what do you call that? <laughs> stick. Do you see? This is a stick. <laughs> You couldn't change gear with this. It wouldn't work. What you can do with this is point at things, OK? Let's just see if we can get you educated. What do you call this bit of a car? Bonnet. 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 It's a bo what do you mean? No, I know you can wear a bonnet on your head as well. It's two things. We're capable of having those different thoughts. <laughs> now, what type of vehicle is this? <laughs> no, it's stupid. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's do another one of these. What type of vehicle is this? Coop. A coop is where you keep your chickens. That's a coupe. That's a French word, I admit. Yeah, a bit. But, and they're muddled with that. George Bush, you heard what he once said about the French? He said the trouble with the French is they have no word for entrepreneur. <laughs> it is difficult. I think the only thing we agree on is steering wheel. Yeah. But then they go and put it on the wrong side of the car. <laughs> It must be really annoying having to drive along like that all the time. Right? <laughs> Why don't you just put it in front of the driver like we do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably a good idea if we get on with the actual show. Yes, it is. It? But we had to clear all that up mm -hmm. because, contrary to what some people have been saying, this actually is a car show. Well, not next week it is. No, no, next week's an exception. Yeah. Well, not when we go to Barbados. Sorry, no, Barbados is definitely another exception. But tonight couldn't be more carry if it tried. And I'm going to prove that point because we're kicking off with this. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> the thing is, though, various supercar makers have now taken the sort of polar bear friendly technology from a Prius and they're now using it to create raw, naked speed. Now, I say the best of these hybrid hypercars is the mad, swivel-eyed McLaren P1, whereas Richard Hammond, who's wrong... I'm not wrong. <laughs> he is, because he says the best is actually the rather boring Porsche 918. It's not boring! <laughs> yes, it is. It isn't. Mm. It isn't. <laughs> well, whatever, we decided to meet up with the cars and settle this once and for all. The location we chose for this titanic duel was Portugal. Specifically, the international racetrack of the Algarve. When we arrived, mechanics from Porsche and McLaren pounced on our cars, fettling them for what was to come. A 
And this meant Hammond and I had some time to indulge in a spot of childish point scoring. Which one of these is going to be the fastest round this track? This? Yeah. Apart from this one, which will be faster? It won't. Which one do you think will be the fastest? This one. This okay, one. So Porsche think the Porsche will be fastest. McLaren say the McLaren. How much is it if I wanted to buy one? I think one was sold in an auction for 1.8 million. 1.8 million dollars. Hammond, how much is yours? 838 euros. Thousand, I'm guessing. Yes, it is thousand, yeah, yeah. Why has your car got a number on the side? It's the Weissach edition, this one. You also get titanium chassis bolts. It's stupid, it's stupid. For just an extra 60,000 pounds. And a carbon fibre bonnet strut. Look at that. How much does that say? About 100 grams. 100 right there. 100 grams. Has the McLaren got a carbon fibre bonnet strut? Doesn't need one. No, because my bonnet doesn't go up because it'll never break down. And it's got silly doors. Proper doors, silly doors. Mine does 34 miles to the gallon. It does 94. 94 miles to the 94 gallon. 94 mpg. Just remind me, Porsche's owned by... That'll be Volkswagen. Soon, the McLaren and the Porsche were ready for some shakedown laps. And for these, we decided we'd drive each other's cars. Straight away, I can tell you that this doesn't have the brutality or the savagery of the McLaren. And because it has rear wheel steering and four wheel drive, it feels secure and safe. And that gives you the confidence <laughs> to play about. If I went round this corner this fast in the McLaren, a lot of poo would come out. Unforgiving P1, my nerves were shot to pieces, but I too was falling in love. 903 horsepower! Oh my god! Oh, you bad, bad, naughty car! Jesus! This recalibrates your mind. I didn't think anything could be as exciting as that Porsche, but this, this is. This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, what a car. I love it. Well? This is rubbish. I was just thinking exactly the same about this. Where are you? This was boring me to death. It was like being stuck in a Victorian woman's novel. Well, I'd rather that than being stuck in a telephone box with a panicking gorilla. Rubbish. It was trying to kill me. I mean, it's no, trying to hurt me. It wants to hurt oh, me. That's why I like it. This is a missionary position car. Razor blade in the hands of a surgeon, sickle in the hands of a drunk peasant. Downton Abbey, Breaking Bad. That's crystal meth. That's some iffy weed. Fine wine, crate of Nuki Brown. Schooner of Sherry, Absinthe. 
James Bond, specifying his martini to be shaken, not stirred. Begs being train spotting, lobbing a pint pot over his shoulder in a nightclub and starting a bar fight. What? Hi. What are you doing here? I am here because, gentlemen, I have in the back of that lorry something that will make your McLaren and your Porsche look like lumps of yesteryear. any sort of thing gave me a fizz like the Ferrari, the Ferrari. This has 950 horsepower, 950. More than either of the other two, and it's lighter, it weighs 1,250 kilograms. Which is less than most hatchbacks. Actually, there is a bit more to the Ferrari, the Ferrari, because what it has is, in effect, a Formula One curse system. It constantly recovers energy that would otherwise be lost using its electric motor and its battery. So as I brake there, the car is actually saying, that energy, I'll have that. Straight. This is what 950 horsepower feels like. was obviously talking nonsense. But there's no getting around the fact that these three cars take automotive science to a new level. They use the latest green technology to squeeze as much speed as possible from every molecule of fuel. As a result, they're all capable of blasting way past 200 miles an hour whilst producing fewer harmful emissions than a family saloon. What we have here then are three incredible machines which at a stroke have made the traditional supercar look wooden and old fashioned. Welcome everyone to the hypercar holy trinity. In that door mirror, I have a one million pound Porsche. In that door mirror, I have a one million pound Ferrari. What a toy box today. Sparks with Jezza. So, Hammond. This could be so expensive. I'm not even in it! Ha <laughs> ha! 
day. But before we ended up in a three million pound crash, we decided to start the tests to see which of the cars was best. I came up with the first one mainly to annoy gate crasher May. Let's make the first test a drag race using electrical power only. Good idea. No, it isn't a good idea. Why not? Because you can't drive the Ferrari on electrical power only. No! No, but of course you can't, because it's, it's a Kerr system, like a Formula One car. It's got a V12 engine and an electric motor, but they're all integrated. They work together all of the time. You can't separate them. You should have thought about that, shouldn't you? Bad planning. With James reduced to the role of onlooker, we lined up the P1 and the 918 on the start line. But then, instead of revving the petrol engines, we shut them down. That is weird. Preparing to start a drag race in complete silence. I still have two electric motors that together produce 285 brake horsepower, which is 109 more than the one electric motor in his McLaren. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've got to love that. The immediate power from an electrical engine. That is 70 miles an hour already and it, it, it isn't enough. <laughs> who, who won that? It was me, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's not important though, is it? Is it not? No, it's just not relevant. Right, right. In a drag race, it's irrelevant which car gets there first. Yeah, yours is the better milk float. <laughs> Back in the pits, Hammond had an idea for the next test. We've got to drive to the hotel, yeah, haven't we? Yeah. It's about an hour away, and it gives us a chance to see what they're like on the road. That's a good point. Real world. That is a good point. I can't do that. I can't... Well, I can't drive the Ferrari on the road. Why? Well, it's not registered. It is, it's got number plates. No, no, just, that's just pretend number plates. If they register it, it becomes second hand and they have to pay the tax. That's why it came in a lorry. So you can't drive it on the road either? Nobody can drive it. It's not road legal. Yet. Oh, no. Mate, that's... Oh, oh that is such a shame. It's an hour of... Oh, sorry, James. That is, that's really a rotten bit of luck because you've come a long way from Italy. I can't give you a lift because there's like the sound man's headphones on the seat and the oh, mixer. No. So no, there's literally nothing I can do. Soon, Richard and I were enjoying the world's best ever commute. It may be a bit sparkling here, but it's unbelievably comfortable. Because it uses electronics rather than traditional anti-roll bars. And that means there's no physical connection between the wheels. So if one goes over a bump, the others aren't affected. It's uncanny. It's like being in a Rolls Royce Phantom. It's a lovely evening, taking the roof panels out, set the air con just so, and I'm enjoying a drive in the country.
Oh, God. to say this, but that Ferrari is useless. Yes, 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 yes. Later on in part two, when these two have stopped dreaming up idiotic and irrelevant tests that it can't take part in, we shall see. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, at this point in the show, we like to sit down and chew the fat about new cars and motoring issues. Like, for example, why in Britain we have to drive at 50 miles an hour when they're doing roadworks to protect the workforce, which is never there. Yes, OK, it's... it's and why fully grown adults have taken to riding around the city on children's toys. Yes, OK. I think they're called issues... bicycles. All is that right. the right word? <laughs> it's issues like that. It's mm. a segment that we are calling Conversation Street. <laughs> Better than that, rather brilliantly, we have made a bespoke version of that sting for every single episode we're going to make for the next three years. Yes. How about that? <laughs> but, hold on. The slight problem with that is that we were so busy doing that, we didn't actually think of anything to talk about in Conversation Street, did we? <laughs> we did. Yeah. What? Oh, ho, ho, you'll love this. James May. The world's slowest moving human being <laughs> has been caught speeding. <laughs> Actually charged by the police. Criminal. That's what <laughs> He's actually quite proud of it. Um, he did it on a Honda CBR 600RR sports bike. Yeah, oh, yeah, the th no, yeah. thing was... Yeah. Hot thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Richard and I were genuinely astonished when he came into the office and said I'd been done for speed. And we're like, what? And <laughs> until we found out how fast he was going. <laughs> James? Yes. How fast was it again? 37 miles an hour. <laughs> that kind of speed. No, it's how did the police catch you? I mean, were they running? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gentle God. jog, yeah, yes. for sure. The thing is, uh, if you've been caught, because we genuinely don't believe anyone in the world has, but if you have been caught, <laughs> caught speeding at a speed less than 37, do honestly please write to us and let us know. If you don't think it's possible, uh, and mark your envelope, um, I'm a tortoise. <laughs> And that is all we have time for this week on Conversations. Whoa, 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 hang on a minute. What? What, are you saying the first ever show and you just mock me for my speeding ticket then we move on? Yes. Well, it's a busy show. It's a busy show. It is a busy it show. Is. Yes, we've got to tell everyone about our track. Yes, we have one. <laughs> this is the sort of place where you can drive cars at speeds that you can do on the road, but only if you want to go to prison afterwards. What, like 38 miles an hour? Well, 39, <laughs> maybe even 40 from time to time. Now, uh, we were hoping that we could bring it round the world with us, like the tent, uh, but unfortunately it's too heavy. <laughs> and, as you're about to see, too bitey. This is it. It's not a race circuit. It's not an airfield. It's not a road. What it is, is brilliant and fast and extremely dangerous. It even looks dangerous on a map because, as you can see, it's the exact same shape as the Ebola virus. Right, time now to show you what a lap looks like. And to do that, we've got a bit of a performance benchmark, a Ferrari 488. Take it away. Take it away. First up, it's the isn't straight, so-called because it isn't straight. There's a super fast left, followed by a super fast right. And if you make a mistake, there's no runoff area or arm code. It's just woods. Woods that are full of wildlife, which likes to run out in front of you. After the second right on the isn't straight, we're into your name here corner. 
Sponsorship opportunities are available here. However, I should explain that it's possible nobody will be looking at your banner because this is a corner that was designed so a car can do this. Today. That's just a friend of mine on his way back up the Isn't Straight towards Old Lady's House. We've called this section Old Lady's House because it's right next to a house where an old lady lives. She tells us she likes cars. Says she used to have one. Not sure she's going to like them quite so much after we've been here a few times. Next up, there's a narrow and bumpy sprint to substation. You need to get this 90 left right or you'll crash into a cage full of electricity. And you'll need to get the final 90 left right as well or you'll run into a field of sheep. So, trees, animals, a house, electricity. And because it's in England, usually quite a lot of moisture in the air. It really is the most dangerous track anywhere in the world. To post a fast time here, you do need those. The car I've selected for my first lap of the Ebola drone is this. the BMW M2. Sadly, there isn't the time in this, our first ever show, to do a full road test of this car, but there is time to say that I think this is the best M car BMW has ever made. In a lot of fast cars these days, you get all sorts of knobs and buttons which you can use to change the, well I say change, I mean ruin the characteristics of the engine and the suspension and the steering and so on. And I always think, well, isn't that like a chef bringing a fish to your table and an oven and some butter and a bit of parsley and saying, cook it yourself? No, you cook it. That's what I'm paying for. This car, happily, has a more back-to-basics approach. In the M2, you've got a little rocker switch down here, which does nothing at all, as far as I can see, and that's it. You're buying a car which was set up at the factory by engineers who know what they're doing. And all you have to do is enjoy it. Which I am doing. Yes, look at this. Oh yeah, loving that. <laughs> I'll do that again, actually. I'll make sure Make sure I was correct. There's not going to be any understeer at all. Poke the back out and hold it there. Yeah! <laughs> I'm going to do that again. Only going the other way. Wrong way round your name here. Klaus and Fritz, I am loving your work. I am, oh, I've made a mess of that. Yes, but I'll just do this and it'll look like I did it on purpose. With the tyres begging for mercy, I got back onto the isn't and unleashed 365 rampaging horsepowers from the turbocharged 3 litre straight six. This isn't as fast in a straight line as an M3, but everywhere else, it is better. It feels less heavy, less cumbersome. And due to the unique 
characteristics of our strays, I can tell the steering is less, it's less twitchy. This track was designed to trip cars up. There are fast corners, slow corners, drifty corners and bumps. It's hard on the tires, it's hard on the brakes, it's hard on the engine, it's point and squirt and bark and yelp. It is vicious. But there is nothing here which has flummoxed the M2. This thing is an absolute masterpiece. Like I said, it is the best M car BMW's ever made. You may think it's mad to suggest the cheapest M car is the best, but look at it this way. This track is a lot cheaper than Silverstone, and I know which one I'd rather drive round. zigzag at old lady's house because that wasn't there when I went. No, it wasn't there when you were there, but after you left, we discovered there's a, an unexploded Second World War bomb. Seriously, right really? where the track was, so we've had to <laughs> sort of go round it. Fair enough. Let me get this right. At our track, yeah. there's trees, mm -hmm. animals, moisture, yeah. electricity, mm -hmm. a house and an unexploded bomb. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's the most dangerous track in the world. Honestly, it makes Imola look like a duvet. Yeah. It really, honestly, it does. <laughs> It anyway, does. all the cars that we test at the Ebola drone will do a timed lap. And to make sure it's a completely level playing field, they will all be driven by the same racing driver. Yeah. Clever. Oh, oh, it gave us some thought. How clever is that? Now, <laughs> thing is, Amazon, OK, insisted that the racing driver in question should be from this side of the pond. So we went to something called NASCAR. <laughs> we found one and we shipped him to England and then we introduced him to the complicated procedure which involves turning right. <laughs> He's called Mike Skinner but we know him simply as the American. Mm. <laughs> uh, we should warn you that some of his views are quite strong. Yes, he has very specific views, for example, on cars that have engines with fewer than eight cylinders. Communist. Yeah. Or more than eight cylinders. Communist. Or cars that have their engine in the middle. Communist. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that isn't American, really, with a V8 is communist. So let's see how he gets on with the M2. Right, there he is, looking utterly bewildered. But he's off a skitter of wheel spin and immediately he's onto the isn't straight. There's a right there that'll have confused him. Now a left, he'll be good at that. Now he can open the taps. Three liters, six cylinders. This thing wouldn't pull a greasy string out of a dog's ass. I've literally no idea what he's talking about. Where I come from, this ain't a car. It's a cry for help. Whatever. He's through the final corner on the isn't straight. Into your name here. Hard on the brakes, grabbing the stick, which is on the left-hand side of where he's sitting, and turning in. See what I mean? No understeer at all. Damn tracks are narrower than my driveway. Yeah, that's because it doesn't have a monster truck on it. I wonder which one of them came up with this thing. The tall one, the short one, or the one with the girly hair? OK, coming up to old lady's house. Hard on the brakes, turning in, round the unexploded bomb, and now opening the taps again. No turbo lag at all, as he hammers down the bumpy back straight towards substation. This is a 90 left, new tarmac, but it held it well. One more 90 left to go through Field of Sheep, and he's done it well, and across the line. Amazing. Now, to make sure that the M2 uh, wasn't on sort of the lap board all by itself, 
We got the American to put uh, we, to put some other benchmark cars. Well, we call them benchmark cars. He calls them communists. Um, <laughs> around the track to see what's what. There they all are. Look, McLaren, Audi, and so on and so uh, forth. Um, hang on a minute. We saw a Ferrari 488 at the track in the film earlier on. Why isn't that on there? Because Ferrari wouldn't let us time it. <laughs> wouldn't let us? No. So, the Ferrari, the Ferrari, can't go on the road mm -hmm. or run on electric only. No. And the 488 can't do a time lap. Ferrari are quite tricky to deal with from time to time. Let's just put it that way and move on. Yeah. Because now it's time to see where the M2 goes on that board. Let's have a look. Let's put it on. Uh oh. <laughs> wow! Wow! It's, it's... I think it's the best M car they've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, look, I prefer it to all the others that are quicker than it. It's yes, it's, <laughs> it's definitely the one you should have if you want one that's slower oh, than all the other M cars. It's, it's better. It's only yeah. two. It's quicker than a Civic. Yeah. <laughs> but it's slower than. If you had a choice of M cars, if you lined them all up and yeah. said, "I'd like the fastest," it wouldn't be that one. Shut up. Better in every single. <laughs> better in every single way. Don't you say anything. You said that. I don't care what. Have you driven one? You, you know what? It's, it's a amazing, fabulous car. Yeah. You've driven it. It's a uh, brilliant car. It really honestly is. It's a shame, really, that we can't take the track around the world with us, isn't it? Because if we did, we could invite some celebrities to drive around it, maybe. We could keep a score sheet of who was the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like it. No, I, I, I don't I, like it. No. I don't think it would work. Nobody wants to. <laughs> I'm not sure that they do. And anyway, we've got a better idea, OK, for our celebrities. We're calling it Celebrity Brain Crash, and we've had a sting made for that as well. <laughs> that is terrible. That is... <laughs> that was <laughs> Who's going to say, I'm going to watch that new Amazon car show, Henry VIII's head explodes? <laughs> well, I want to know, why is there smoke coming out of Brad Pitt's head? What are we trying to say? <laughs> no, we're not. No, no we're not saying not. that. <laughs> not that. That is a terrible sting, but the machine itself isn't terrible at all. It's, it's used to measure somebody's mental agility, their observational skills and their ability to multitask. It's actually based on a machine that's used to test um, fighter pilots who want to join the Royal Air Force, which, as we all know, is the finest and greatest air force in the world. <laughs> what do you mean, <laughs> boo? What? If that was true, we wouldn't have to help you every time you get in trouble. Oh, <laughs> You lot can grumble as much as you like, mm. but we edit this show and we're British, so you'll just get <laughs> cut out. <laughs> so, uh, the Royal Air Force is better than the US Air Force. USA! 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 The Royal Air Force is better than all the other Air Forces in the world. <laughs> anyway, we're all now in agreement. The Royal Air Force is, uh, is the best Air Force in the world. So, so we're all in agreement the Royal Air Force is quite good. Yeah, that'll do, that'll do, it's fine. So let's get back to Celebrity Brain Crash and meet our first ever guest. Yes, now normally on other shows the guest will come through a sparkly curtain, wave a bit and then sit down, but not here. Oh, yes, our guests make a proper arrival. And on that note, let's meet tonight's star. He has been in pretty much every single movie franchise there is, apart from Bridget Jones. No, no, he, no, he was Bridget Jones. Was he? No. No, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> he was in the Bourne films, he's in the Mission Impossible films, he's in the Avenger films, and right now he is 10,000 feet above us. Waiting to make one hell of an entrance, ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy Renner! <laughs> there he is, that's his plane. Hold on, everybody, here he comes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He is ready to jump. 
He is ready to jump. And there he goes! Oh! That is amazing to see one doing his own stunts. Yeah, I know, and he is looking good. And I tell you what, when he gets here, I do want to talk to him about that Bourne Legacy film. A, what it was like to punch Shane Jacobson, and B... Oh, hang on. He's leaving this terribly late. <laughs> That's, does, um, that, does that mean he's not coming on, then? No, James, he's not. It's OK, though. We anticipated this sort of thing. So we got a, a backup guest ready. Uh, he's, he, was in, he was in Man From U.N.C.L.E. Uh, he was in Lone Ranger. He was both twins in The Social Network. And uh, his new film is called Nocturnal Animals. Uh, we haven't had time, unfortunately, to organise a dramatic entrance, but I hope you'll give him a warm welcome nevertheless. Ladies and gentlemen, Army Hammer! <laughs> oh, my... Jesus! Is that a snake? It's a snake. That's a rocket snake. Is it? Yeah. He's been killed by now. Really quiet, everyone. Quiet, please. Quiet, that's... There's literally nothing we can do. No, he's yards away from and us. And anyway, we... snakes are like herds of them, aren't they? They hunt in packs. Yeah, they're pack animals. Does, um... Does that mean he's not coming on either? Well, <laughs> no, James. He's finished writhing around in agony, and now he's dead. So that is a no. Right. Well, uh, maybe there's somebody famous in the audience. Well, it's oh. unlikely. No, no, serious... You know Carol Vorderman? Yeah. Yeah. She rang me this morning. She was at an air show nearby and said, can she come to the show? Really? She's, oh, no, she's honestly... Really? She's, really? She's, and she's, I know you don't know who Carol Vorderman is. She's a huge, huge, huge star in the UK. She started out on a programme called Countdown, established herself as being unbelievably brilliant, a fantastic mathematician and very beautiful. Mm. Yeah, she's also dead. <laughs> <laughs> what? She's dead. Well, how did that happen? Well, I don't know, I'm not a pathologist, but she's <laughs> dead is what she is. Seriously? Yes. Christ. Problem. What are we going to do? Um... Jesus, look at that out there. It's like a... It's just littered with corpses, and now we're... <laughs> Lads, I don't think this bit is working. Let's drop Celebrity Brain Crash this week. We'll do it again in South Africa next week, and I think people will have forgotten all this. They, they might not. No, I think they will. We'll just skip over it now. It's not going to happen. And that's OK, cos we can get back to the cars. Yes, moving on. <laughs> this, week, this week, we are trying to find out which of the new breed of hybrid hypercars is the best. Yes, on day one at the track in Portugal, we established that the... McLaren P1 is a mentalist, <laughs> that the Porsche 918 is very good milk float, and that the Ferrari, the Ferrari, can do nothing at all. <laughs> Some of that is true. But now, day two. This meant engaging launch control, which in the McLaren takes about a fortnight. I have to have the drivetrain in track mode, the aero package in sport mode so that the rear end squats when I set off and gives me more traction. I have to have the DRS button pressed with my thumb to keep the rear wing open, which reduces drag, obviously. Launch control in the Porsche, left foot on the brake, hard, right foot on the throttle, hard, light goes green, left foot off brake, ping! Launch button pressed for two seconds, left foot on brake, right foot on throttle. Press launch control, mash the throttle, 
within four seconds, release the brake. Three seconds later, I have full boost and I have to set off then within three seconds or the entire system disengages. I'm going to get this wrong, just so you know. I've got a lot to do in here. Since it was clear I'd got all my buttons wrong, the chaps agreed to another run. Set rep, the lights went green before the boost was ready, and I had the DRS button still pressed when I got to the end, which meant I had no downforce, which meant, well, poo came out. This time I'm going to do it with more drag, uh, which will slow me down, but I will be able to stop without killing myself. Care system charged, right. Boost building. Three, two. Because James had somehow messed up that time, and because this test was about the cars, we decided to go again. It's a rocket ship! For England! No! No! Okay, we have all three won this now. Determined to find a definitive one, two, three finishing order, we ran again. Another totally different result there, gentlemen. And again. <laughs> That's a different result again. And again. At this point, we decided to call a halt to proceedings because we had reached a scientific conclusion. It turns out that it doesn't really matter which car you buy, it all depends on your shoes. Now, this is a Todd loafer, slightly worn to give a, a crisper jump off the brake pedal and it's immediate. Now, this is this a is, Converse. And I'm surprised there's more sponge in yeah, there than I thought. Spongy, See, Adidas, it. they weren't thinking that through. No, no, no. See, as you lift your foot up... It's a millisecond. It's it I know you've got Kurs, I know you've got a 6.3-litre V12, and I know that launch control system's amazing, but it's all let down by the sponginess of the Adidas shoe. So they should sell you the car and the shoes. No, more than that. Have you got the correct shoes and have you worn them in? Exactly. Yeah. Fresh shoes, yeah. lads. I need to just run around the track. We need to, be, uh, <laughs> run need to skid in. about. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. With that sorted, it was time to bring in a racing driver to see which of our cars could do the fastest lap. Our resident American said he wasn't interested because all three cars are probably communist. So instead, we went for a Belgian chap who's done Formula One and Formula E, Jerome D'Ambrosio. Jerome 
took the cars out to get a sense of how they handled it. Alors, on va commencer par la Porsche, la plus facile à rouler, euh, voiture beaucoup plus assez neutre, euh, beaucoup beaucoup de grip dans les, dans les virages lents, une très très bonne motricité. On est directement très à l'aise, il faut un ou deux tours pour se mettre en confiance. Oui, c'est vrai. Exactement. La Ferrari, c'est la voiture euh, un, magnifique, une balance de voiture très neutre. Mmh. Entre les trois, la Ferrari euh, est un super compromis. Elle met aussi assez rapidement en confiance euh, et donc je pense que voilà. Oui, c'est marrant. La McLaren, une voiture, je pense peut-être la plus difficile à piloter. Très facile de faire une erreur. C'est vraiment une voiture de grand garçon. Il faut faire attention et, et donc pas facile de faire un tour. Je pense qu'elle est un peu moins efficace. À ce point, la word a reached us that Jeremy was taking liberties with the subtitling machine. So we moved on to the big event, the timed lapse. Once the mechanics had finished their preparations, the three speed traps were activated. And the Ferrari, the Ferrari took its place on the start line. Look how good it looks there. This is just wasting time, it's wasting rubber and fuel. No, this is like an amuse-bouche. Yeah, it is. You've ordered the duck and the sherry trifle. And you're a, a melon ball. <laughs> I'm not even listening. It was doing 231.4 kilometers an hour at the end of the straight. It's about the same speed as like a Golf diesel, something like that. Going down the hill using gravity. Yeah, is assist. he stopping off for shopping or something? He must be. James, you want to go and get a cup of tea? Well, we've warmed the track. Next, it was the turn of the Porsche 918. How much faster will it go because of the stripes, do you think? Much. Two, three, one point. So he's faster than the Ferrari. One eight three point zero. Way, way, way slower than him. Don't forget, between here and the next measuring point, okay, you've got four slow corners, and those are the ones where the Porsche was going to make at the time. And because of the four wheel steering. Oh, like a Honda Prelude. No. I'm in ten. I'm in ten point what? One. So almost to a tenth of a kilometre an hour, the same speed as you. Here it comes. Inspiring noises. Finally, it was the turn of the psycho killer, the trickiest, the edgiest of the three. 
But I was so confident it would win, I was prepared to take a massive gamble. If the McLaren isn't the fastest, you two can knock my house down. What? Knock it down. What, your house? Yeah, and I mean that. That's how confident I am that that will be the fastest. That's a ser you know we will do that. Yep. It's a serious bet. Yeah. But fine. If that's not the fastest, yep. we can knock your house down. Yep. You know where it is. You've yes. both been. Yeah. I'd love to knock it down. Here we go. A lot riding on this. Five point nine. Okay, it's fastest yeah. at the end of the first straight. Would you like to come to my house for dinner? Yes. Can I bring a bulldozer? It's 8.3. Oh, that is quick. It's quite brisk. There's no... It's quite you know, brisk. We don't know how fast it's going around the tight turns. Might have been doing two kilometres an hour around it's here. Oh, what the... that back to the tent thank you so much now i want to make it absolutely plain because i know this matters to anorax all three cars were running on exactly the same sort of tires yes same tires same track same driver so the times are down to the cars yeah. yep and now it is time to reveal those times and let me just make it absolutely clear we don't know what they are the producers have kept them from us they're they top secret yeah. so let's put the scoreboard up and let's begin with the ferrari the ferrari i believe let's see what it did it in please <laughs> 154.4. We don't know if that's any good, do we? No. But, <laughs> well, let's move on and do the Porsche next. Let's have a look. What did the Porsche do it in? Oh, yeah! <laughs> it's the poo! Yes! Yes! Did you see? You said it would mince the Porsche, and it didn't mince it. It was slower than the Porsche. I told you, it's just a melon ball. It's slower than my car, which was faster than your car. Yeah, it points over a second, and it looks better. Yeah, it did, in my mirror, where oh. it belongs, get it slower. It's a melon ball, and it lost. Hammond, what? calm down. All right. Because now we must bring up the time that really matters. Yeah. The one where a lot's at stake. The McLaren, <clears throat> the McLaren P1. Are you uh, nervous? No. Sure. No. A little bit. Sure. No, nervous. I'm not well, nervous. Why be nervous? Because you could get like a shopping trolley and keep all your things in it. <laughs> move around, make some new friends under a bridge somewhere. Hammond. I'd say sell your body. Don't do that. Be quiet. <laughs> let's let's bring up the time of the P1. Here we go. Oh God. Where is it? <laughs> oh. oh! But it's not the fastest, it's the slowest. Ladies and gentlemen, journalist, broadcaster and homeless man, Jeremy Carlton. That's what it is. You're not really going to knock my house down. Yes, we are. <laughs> I bet. Is a bet. Yeah, that's the deal, and we're going to film it. 
Yeah, no, but the thing is, on the tyres that the McLaren can be bought with, it was faster. Yeah, but, no, no, but we, we agreed right at the start we'd all run on the same tyres, didn't we? deal before your car lost. So let's just, <laughs> let's just sum this first show up, shall we? I've lost my house. <laughs> We've had a fight with the audience. Big one. Somebody shot our drone down. Yes. <laughs> And we've killed three quite major celebrities. Yeah. But, <laughs> on the plus side, my Porsche was the fastest! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. And on that terrible disappointment, I'm afraid it's time to end. Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week in Johannesburg. Goodbye! Yeah!